Greetings, Nick with Sweetwater here, and today we're going to learn the intro riff and melodic lead line to one of rock's all-time classic songs, Layla by Derek and the Dominoes. And it not only features the amazing playing of Eric Clapton, but also Dwayne Ullman too. Now there's a brace of six-string legends for you. Layla was one of 14 songs on this album here, Derek and the Domino's 1971 album, Layla and Other Assorted Love Songs. Although the songwriting credit for Layla only says Eric Clapton and Jim Gordon, Dwayne Ullman deserves some major praise here too. Why? Well, in addition to playing some amazing guitar on this song, according to Mr. Clapton himself, Dwayne also came up with the song's signature riff. And as a result, a song that was initially intended to be a ballad was transformed into what was soon to become an iconic rock song. Funnily enough, when Layla was released as a single in 1971, it didn't do that well. That said, when it was included on this album, The History of Eric Clapton, which came out just a year later in 1972, the re-released Layla single made the top 10 on both sides of the Atlantic. And that's living, breathing proof of the truth of the old adage, if at first you don't succeed, try again. Anyway, short history lesson over, let's learn the main guitar parts to the classic opening of this song. We'll start off with this one. Oh, before we go any further though, I should quickly point this out. If you want to play along to the recorded version of Layla, you'll have to tune your guitar approximately a quarter of a step sharp. The reason for you having to tune this way? Well, rumor has it the recording was sped up slightly, which would explain the tuning being a hair on the sharp side. Apparently, speeding up the tape like this was pretty common back in the day. This catchy little rhythm riff is in D minor, and we're going to break it into three bite-sized chunks. Now, the first chunk consists of the first seven notes, surprise, surprise, and they are these. And the second chunk is this short section. And the third and final chunk is this one. Hopefully breaking it up like this will make this riff pretty easy to digest when we're learning it. Let's go back to chunk one, shall we? Here it is one more time. And again, a little slower. All seven of these notes are played on just two strings, the A and the D. And you also only have to use one finger. <laughs> nice! The first two notes are these, the open A string note, followed by a hammer on to the C note at the third fret on the same string just like this. So it's pick, then hammer. As you can see, I'm using my third finger to do the hammer on, but you can use whichever one you like, even your pinky. The next three notes are these, the open D string note, then a hammer on to the F note at the third fret on the same string, immediately followed by a pull off back to the open D string note. So it's pick, hammer on, pull off, just like this. So it's pick, Hammer pull. And once again, I'm using my third finger to perform this hammer on and pull off move. Pretty simple so far, right? Here are the first five notes of chunk one. And again, a little slower. Now, being a math genius, I know this. Seven minus five equals two. So we're a mere brace of notes away from learning the whole of chunk one. And those two notes are the C note at the third fret of the A string, followed by the open D string note. Once again. And that's it. So here is the whole of chunk one played slowly. And again, a little bit faster. Like I said, a one finger affair. Next up is chunk two, namely this short section. And again, a little bit slower. We start off with three two-note root fifth power chords all played on our pals, the A and D strings. D5, C5, and lastly, B flat five. The D5 consists of the D note at the fifth fret on the A string, 
and the A note at the seventh fret of the D string. You just play them together like this. And as you can see, I'm fretting them with my first finger and pinky respectively. But it goes without saying, if you want to use your first and third fingers like this, you can do that as well. One, three, whatever works for you, go for it. Anyway, after playing this D5, you then slide the chord shape back two frets to the C shape at the third fret, like this. One more time. And as you can probably see, you don't pick the strings again to sound the C5, you merely slide to it like this. So it's pick, then slide. Then after doing that, we play the same shape on the same two strings, but this time with my first finger at the first fret, and we get this, B flat five. Like I said, my first finger is at the first fret on the A string, and my pinky is at the third fret of the D. So, so far we've got this. A simple three chord pick, slide, pick sequence, once again. Then after we hit the B flat five, this bad boy here, we do this. And as you can maybe see already, all I'm doing here is this. I'm leaving my pinky on the D string, but lifting my first finger off the A string, like that, and then picking both strings again together. So from B flat five, first finger off. Then having done this, I play the G note at the third fret on the low E string with my third finger, just like this. So I've gone from the B flat five to this, then this. Here's the whole of chunk two played together as one. And a little bit slower. Not bad. Next up is chunk three. Short and sweet. Here it is again, a little bit slower. As you've probably noticed, this one is pretty similar to the end of chunk two. We start with the same C5 power chord on the A and D string we played earlier, this one. Then, just like we did towards the end of chunk two, we lift our first finger off the A string, like this, and leave the other finger on the D string where it is, then we hit both of those strings together again, like this. So the first part of chunk three is this. We then play the G note at the third fret of the low E string again, but this time using our first finger, like this. So, so far, we've got this. A little bit slower. Then to finish it off, we go back to the D5 power chord we started chunk two with, namely this one. The one with my first finger at the fifth fret on the A string. So chunk three is this. One more time, a little slower. Having learnt these three chunks, we then put them together, and hey presto, we've got our opening rhythm riff, this bad boy here. And a hair slower. Right, next up is the lead melody line, and to do that, I'm gonna change guitars, just because I can. Be right back. And there we have it, thanks to digital magic, the guitar change. As you've probably gathered from listening to the song, there's a whole bunch of guitar tracks on the start of Layla. Six, in fact, I think, including a couple of really cool slide guitar parts. That said, I'm not gonna do six parts, so I've condensed what I think are the main two lines into one guitar part. Here's what he did at the start. <laughs> For the first two times the riff we've just learned is played, I merely played chunk one an octave higher and let the last note, the D note, ring. Just like this. And then when the riff starts again, I do it again. 
As you can see, I'm playing the exact same seven note pattern as in chunk one, but higher up the neck so it's an octave higher. I'm playing the A and C notes at the seventh and tenth fret on the D string, like this. And then the D and F notes on the same frets, but this time on the G string. So using those four notes, I'm merely repeating the same pick, hammer on, pick, hammer on, pull off, pick, pick pattern, just like this. And one more time, just a little bit slower. As you can see, I'm using my pinky to use this because I'm a man. No. <laughs> <laughs> Layla, take two, marker. As you can see, I'm using my pinky to do this, but you can do it with your third string if you like too. Like this. And don't forget, let that last note ring and add a nice little bit of vibrato to it as well, of course. So, after doing that twice, I then do this. To be precise, I've just played two 12-note patterns. This one... And then this one. Now, 12 notes sounds a little intimidating, doesn't it? But don't worry, because the good thing is this. The first seven notes happen to be our pal Chunk One again just played another octave higher, like this. So what we have here, my friend, is deja vu, but this time on the B and high E strings using frets 10 and 13 on both of them. And once again, it's the same pick, hammer on, pick, hammer on, pull off, pick, pick pattern. As you can see, this time I'm using fingers one and three to do chunk one. And the main reason is this. The first note of the remaining five left is a whole step bend at the 13th fret of the high E string, like this. What I'm doing here is bending that F note up a whole step so it sounds like G, which is this note here at the 15th fret. That's my target pitch. So I've got to get this note bent up so it sounds like this one. Also, notice that I'm using my middle finger to help my third finger do the bend. Also, check this out. I've got my fretboard hand thumb over the top of the neck to give me some strength, something to push against while doing this bend. After this bend, there are just four notes left in the pattern, and they are these. The first note is the one we've just bent, but not bent, which is F. Then we play E at the 12th fret of the same high E string with my middle finger, then C at the 13th fret on the B string with my third finger. Then finally, the D note at the 10th fret on the high E string with my pointer. So... That's it. That's the whole 12. Once again, here's my first 12 played kind of slow. Right, next up is our second pattern of 12 notes. Now, what's cool about pattern two is this. Except for two notes, it's exactly the same as pattern one. The first seven notes are exactly the same, namely our chunk one again, played on the high E and B strings, like this. And the last three are also the same. So in a nutshell, the only difference between pattern one and pattern two is the bent note and the one that immediately follows it, which thankfully in both cases is the note that was just bent. In pattern one, just to remind you, these two notes were these. Bending the F note up to G, then bringing it down and playing it as an F. And for pattern two, we do this. We do the same thing, but two frets higher. So this time we're bending a G note at the 15th fret up to sound like A, and then bringing it down like this. Make sense? So first seven notes, then that bend, bring it down, and then last three notes. That is pattern two. Here it is one more time. Two 
two pivotal guitar parts in one of the most iconic rock songs ever written. Have fun with this one, my friend. I'm out. See ya! Thank you so very, very, very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment nicely, please, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs. Au revoir. See ya!